Let's try to solve this integral of sine raised to the fourth power. Seems like it's pretty simple, but actually you will have to use half angle formula here three times. So let's see how it works. Well, sine to the four can be written as, and actually I would suggest you to first find indefinite integral and then plug the limits of integration to find definite integral. So sine to the four, three x dx can be written as sine squared 3x times sine squared 3x dx. Now each can be written using the formula of half or double angle formula, the one the name usually means the same thing. I remember that for sine it's one half then 1 plus or minus, it's always cosine, and the angle is always always double, so it's going to be 6x. To remember if it's plus or mi minus, I did this way. I remember that cosine likes itself, so it's plus, but sine doesn't like cosine, so it's minus for sine. And the same thing for the second sine squared. So now you're going to have integral with 1 quarter outside. Did you see why 1 quarter? Because this piece in blue will happen twice. Then I will have 1 minus cosine 6x. And either you repeat it twice or you're just squaring it dx. How to integrate that? Let's distribute the square of difference. 1 quarter, I will have 1 minus double product cosine 6x times 1 plus cosine squared 6x dx. Now, which parts we know how to integrate? Integral of 1, we know that. Integral of cosine, we know that, even though we will need to use some u substitution over here, calling 6x u. But the last one is not very clear, and that's where the third half angle formula steps in. Cosine squared can be written as, again, 1 half, then it's going to be 1 plus or minus, since cosine likes cosine, and it's going to be cot plus cosine, and now instead of 6, it's going to be 12x. So, we're ending with, let's carefully collect all the coefficients, 1 quarter integral, 1 minus 2 cosine 6x plus one half plus one half cosine twelve x dx. Can you integrate all of this piece by piece? Let's do it. Integral of one quarter. That's going to be one quarter x. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to keep dragging one quarter or not, or you want to distribute it. Maybe let's keep it factored. So this one quarter, I will keep it outside. So integral of one is x. Integral of cosine six x, either you perform your substitution or you remember the u substitution shortcuts, which you can watch in my video. In this case, uh, cosine of six x is going to be, integral of cosine is sine, so it's gonna be minus two sine six x, Divide by the leading coefficient, which is 6, so I'm dividing by 6. Now, plus 1 half, technically speaking, we could actually simplify this. 1 and plus 1 half, that will give me 3 halves. So this is 1 half x, and I can just, uh, let's keep it here, 1 half x. But 1 half x plus x is 3 half x. Now, the last cosine also requires you substitution, and again, either you perform it, or you're, you remember the shortcuts which I just already did. It's going to be 1 half integral of cosine is sine 12x divided by the leading coefficient. In this case, it's 12. Close brackets, simplify. So it's going to be 1 quarter outside. x plus 1 half x, that's going to be 3 halves x. Then I will have 2 divided by 3, uh, 2 divided by 6 gives me one-third and one-half and over one over 12 is one over 24. So you can create common denominator. No, actually those signs cannot be collected together because they have different angles. 
So it's going to be plus one third sine of 6x plus 1 over 24 sine of 12x. Because they have different angles, you cannot add them up together. Be careful with this. Plus c. That's my uh, indefinite integral. So now I just need to remember that actually we started with a definite integral from 0 to pi over 3. The integral from 0 to pi over 3. Was it sine to the 4? Yes, sine to the 4. 3x will be all of this. But I will have to plug the top minus the bottom, remember, for the definite integral. Paste. Here it is. And let's write down. Nice. So I will have a bar from 0 to pi of 3. Start plugging in. And that's why I like having one quarter outside. Because then it will not um, mess up the calculation. So I will have 3 halves. X is pi over 3. Plus 1 third sine 6 times pi over 3. Plus 1 over 24. Sine of 12 times pi over 3. Minus... 1 quarter and 0 everywhere because sine of 0 even if it's multiplied by 6 or by 12 is 0 and there's also an x there so i'm adding up i'm ending up with the next result let's see what kind of angles do we have 6 times pi over 3 that is 2 pi sine of 2 pi is 0 so this is 2 pi sine of 2 pi is 0 so we don't need this term. Then sine of 12 times pi over 3, that is sine of 4 pi. That one is also 0. We don't need that. So it's only left the very first piece, which is pretty convenient. We're going to have 3 simplified, cancel out. And the answer is 1 over 4 times 1 over 2, that's 1 eighth pi. And that is the final answer. Well, now you know what we did. The most important part was not the end. The most important part was to understand that you should use the half angle formula uh, kind of twice here, but you can see it as three times if you want. And then carefully collect all the terms and then plug the limits of integration.